Hello YouTube and welcome to the next roots learning video and my second German roots learning video. On today's journey we're going to be taking a DB BR420 electric multiple unit along the Munich S-Bahn on the S6 route from Tutzing to Munich Ostbahnhof, a total distance of around 39 and a half kilometers. I would just like to say at this point I do apologize if my pronunciations on some of the place names are off. I'm so sure that if you're German or you know these place names in real life you might laugh at some of my attempts at pronunciation but I did look up most of the pronunciations online there's only a couple that I couldn't actually find pronunciations for and I've written them down phonetically in my notes to try and help me so I'm going to try and get them as accurate as possible Along the way from Tutzing to Ostbahnhof station we will be calling at Fildafing, Possenhofen, Starnberg, Starnberg Nord Gauting, Stockdorf, Planig, Grefelfing, Westkreuz, Pacing, Leim, Hirschgarten, Donnersberger Brücke, Hackerbrücke and finally Ostbahnhof. While this is only my second German roots learning video, this is the third German video that I have made as I've already made the German signaling guide which many of you may have seen. If you haven't seen that I'm going to put the link to that video in the description of this video. So I won't be going into detail into the signaling system on this journey. If you'd like to know the signaling system in more detail then please do refer to that video. The BR420 electric multiple unit was built between 1969 and 1997 with a total of 480 of these units built. The total weight of each unit is 138 tonnes and with a maximum speed of 120 kilometres per hour which is around 75 miles per hour. These units were built for high rates of acceleration and so we should be able to reach 75 miles per hour within 40 seconds with a maximum acceleration rate of 2 miles per hour per second. There are 12 200 kilowatts or 270 horsepower uh, motors in each unit giving a total power output per unit of 2400 kilowatts which is 3200 horsepower and on today's journey we're driving a formation of two units connected together. Once in the cab of the class 420, the first thing that we need to do is move the reversing handle into the forward position. So I've just done that now. The next thing I'm going to do is turn on the safety systems, which in this locomotive, or should I say in this unit, are the PZB and the LZB systems. The uh, buttons to turn them on are different from usual because I don't believe that this is a model that was made by Dovetail Games. So first of all, I'm going to press Shift and 7, which should turn on the CIFA system. And now I press Q to reset that and you probably notice the light towards the left of the dashboard illuminated which is the CIFA light. The CIFA system acts very much like the driver safety device on British trains. Now I'm going to press Shift and 8 to turn on the PZB system. And now you can see up here this uh, the lights are all cycling and then the light has settled on 85 which means that we are a type O train or a uh, high speed uh, passenger train with good acceleration and braking rates. Now just to have a quick look around the cab over here we have the main train brake which is operated in the usual way but after reading the manual of this unit I understand that the train brake is not used in normal operation and should only normally be used in emergency operation so once I've released the train brake as we depart from here we won't be using this for the rest of the journey and that's because the power handle here is a combined traction and brake controller and so we have 10 steps of power and 9 steps of braking on this handle and as you apply the brakes the computer systems on board combine the dynamic braking with the air brakes to give you a consistent brake force so as we slow down the dynamic brakes would gradually reduce and be replaced by more air braking 
It is recommended in the manual that for a braking distance on this train, you should allow 600 meters at 75 miles per hour using notch 8 braking. However, when I've tried to replicate that in the game, I've found that I just wasn't slowing down quick enough and indeed found myself overshooting a couple of stations. So we will be braking slightly further back than 600 meters, although in some places we may be braking slightly lighter than notch 8 braking. I believe that that's covered most of the things in the cab now. I'd just like to point out up here, of course, we have the speedometer, which is measured in kilometers per hour, as all German trains are. And over here we have the brake gauges, so you can see the various gauges. And as I release the brakes, you can now see the top one there, which says n uh, number of bars that went up. And indeed, as I apply the brakes harder, the yellow needle on the top left of the four gauges there went down showing that we are applying the brakes harder still so you'll see that fluctuate quite a lot particularly when we're using the combined traction and brake controller to slow down you may have noticed that i have already put the headlights on so now that we've looked at all of this we are pretty much ready to start Departing from Tutzing, the starting speed limit is 110 kilometers per hour, and we've got around 4.8 kilometers to go to the next stop, which is Fildafing. So just as we were departing there, you may have noticed that on the PZB system there, the 85 and the 70 lamp were illuminating alternately, and that's because we were under restricted mode when we started. I pressed the end key, on the keyboard which is the PZB release button and that then caused the 85 lamp to illuminate solidly. If I hadn't have done that and we'd gone above 45 kilometers per hour we would have then found that the emergency brakes would have been applied on this train. As we're now approaching 110 kilometers per hour I have cut down the power a bit and I'm just going to keep a close eye on the speed for a moment. We are currently going uphill on a 1 in 85 upward gradient, which means that we do need a bit more power than usual to try and maintain speed. So I don't think I mentioned it, but uh, this journey is on the Munich to Garmisch Partenkirchen route, and we're driving just under half the route, which is the local lines into Munich. And the first time I ever played on this route was actually in Microsoft Train Simulator with the fantastic Pro Train series which came from German developer Blue Sky Interactive and I used to really enjoy playing their add-ons. I had most of them including having to order some from the Amazon German website. And the Carvendelbahn in Microsoft Train Simulator ran from Munich through Garmisch-Partenkirchen and onwards to Mittenwald and then into Austria finally terminating at Innsbruck. So it was around 50 miles longer than the route that we have from Dovetail Games. And I just genuinely felt that they were much better value for money, the uh, Pro Train series, compared to what we get in Train Simulator today. At this next signal just coming up at kilometre post 36, you probably just thought, saw the 36 on the overhead catenary there, we've got 1.4 kilometres to go to our next stop. And so what I'm looking out for now is the next signal, which I believe would normally be a warning signal, which will be at the end of these distance markers just here. And at this next signal, I'm now going to apply the brakes to start slowing down for our stop at Fildafing. I'm aiming to enter platforms on this journey at between 50 and 60 kilometers per hour, which seems to me to be a pretty good speed to be entering platforms at. And you can now see the platform just coming up here. 
and we're going to be entering at around 55 kilometers an hour, which is around 35 miles per hour. At all of the stations on this journey, we need to aim to stop at the end of the platform. Departing Fildafing, the starting speed limit is up to 120 kilometers per hour, which is around 75 miles per hour. And at this point, we've got 2.1 kilometers to go to the next stop, which is Possenhelfen. Due to the close proximity of the next stop being only around one and a quarter miles from the previous stop, now that we've reached 110 kilometers per hour, I'm just going to idle the power here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop as we enter this next left-hand curve just coming up, which has rather a large amount of super elevation on it. So we're now entering the left-hand curve, and so I'm going to start applying the brakes. Coming into this platform slightly quicker than I may have liked, but I think that at 60 kilometers per hour, we should still be able to stop okay, especially as we've got to travel the full length of the platform to stop. Departing from Possenhelfen, the starting speed limit is 120 kilometers per hour, and we've got 4.8 kilometers to go to the next stop, which is Starnberg. As I was mentioning a little while ago about pro train add-ons, I'm not sure if Blue Sky Interactive have made any routes for Train Simulator 2015, but if they have, I'd be very interested in checking them out. Um, as I said, they, they gave great long routes, which were great value for money, with a great selection of trains with them as well. Um, I remember one particular route, which we have in Train Simulator or part of, we have the Munich to Augsburg route here in Train Sim 2015. But with Pro Train 3, which was released all the way back in 2003, we had the route from Munich through Augsburg and another 120 miles further, all of the way to Stuttgart. Along this section now, we are going downhill and we're going down at 1 in 83. However, for some reason, I'm not quite sure the rolling resistance is quite right on this train. So as a result, we do still need to use a small amount of power to prevent us from losing speed on this downhill section. What I'm looking out for as we get closer to Starnberg is actually a signal, which will be a flashing green signal with a PZB warning on it. And there will be a number eight illuminated indicating that we have to slow down to 80 kilometers per hour by the time we reach the next signal. So I'm looking out for that signal along here now. As we pass it, I will reset the PZB alarm. It looks like this is the signal here. So I'm gonna press page down now just before we pass it. 
which resets the alarm and I'm now going to start braking immediately for a speed reduction to 80 kilometers per hour to ensure that we're not going too fast. I know that we have to slow down, I believe it will be to just above that speed by the time we pass the 500 hertz magnet for the next signal, which will be coming up in a moment. We have also just had a warning for an upcoming 60 km per hour speed limit which will be coming into force shortly after this signal and indeed this next signal is also going to have a PZB alarm as this signal is also going to be warning us of an upcoming 60 km per hour signal speed limit. As soon as we pass this signal now so I've now reset the PZB alarm and I'm now slowing down to 60 km per hour in time for the upcoming 60 speed limit. So we'll first have a permanent fixed track speed limit, which will be a whiteboard with a black 6 written on it. And then the signal at the end of the platform where we're about to stop will also have a 6 on it indicating that that is also the signal speed limit and not just the track speed limit. So we're just coming around the corner into Starnberg station now. At this point I'm now going to apply the brakes to ensure that we slow down in time. Once again we do need to stop at the end of the platform. Correction, we don't need to stop at the end of the platform. I'm aiming to stop just before this reminder signal you can see with the flashing green on it just here. Departing Starnberg, the starting speed limit is 60 km per hour and we've got around 1.3 km to go to the next stop which is Starnberg Nord. As we get close to 60 km per hour I'm now bringing the power back to idle to allow the train to coast until we can accelerate further. In a moment the speed limit will be going up to 140 km per hour, however we won't be able to accelerate to that before we need to slow down for our next stop. The speed limit is currently still 60 km per hour, as you probably just saw we did just get a reminder just there. Uh, one thing to say is that the maximum permitted speed of this train is indeed 120 km per hour. So even though the speed limit is about to go up to 140, we will not be able to accelerate to that. And indeed the emergency brakes on this train will be applied if we exceed 120 km per hour for more than a few seconds. You can now see our next stop is just coming up here. So I applied the brakes just before entering the platform and where we need to stop here at Starnberg Nord is around where it says point A on the platform on the right hand side. So you can just see the A coming up now and I'm aiming to stop next to that. Departing Starnberg Nord, the starting speed limit is 140 km per hour, though as I've already mentioned for us that is 120 km per hour. And at this point we have the longest distance between any of the stops on this journey to go at 7.6 km to the next stop, which is Gauting.
So we've uh, currently got the Steam Summer Sale on. I'd just like to say that I've actually invested in quite a few new uh, trains and DLCs for Train Simulator, though the majority of them have been German trains for the simple reason I really am getting a bit fed up of driving default scenarios if I want to drive a, ju a journey in Germany and I just did not have the variety of stock needed to download many workshop scenarios so I've actually now bought seven new German units and locomotives so I'm hoping that you'll be able to see a few more German uh, trains come onto this channel in the future in German journeys. I'm actually quite getting into driving them at the minute and it's great to practice using the PZB system. I find it a really satisfying experience to drive with the PZB turned off um, with the HUD also turned off at the same time. So I'm just adjusting the power handle along here to try and maintain us at a certain speed. We are currently going downhill at 1 in 85 so I'd like to correct that we were we weren't going downhill in fact we were going up at 1 in 67 it's just after the closed station that we've just gone through that we're now going to start going downhill at 1 in 85 and I need to use roughly notch 1 power to try and maintain our speed what I'm going to be looking out for along here is another signal with a PZB warning. This time the signal will have a 4 on it, indicating that we need to slow down to 40 km per hour by the next signal, which is only 1 km beyond. So as soon as I see the signal, the flashing green, with the 40 km per hour speed warning on it, I'm immediately going to brake and go to roughly notches 7 to 8 to try and slow down in time as we've only got one kilometre to slow from 120 to 40 kilometres per hour and you do generally need to slow down a bit before the signal I believe it's by the 500 hertz magnets I think I may have already mentioned so I'm going to make sure that I've slowed down before that to ensure that we don't get a penalty brake application I've just added a little bit of power there as I just felt we were losing just a little bit too much speed in some ways I wish this train had a speed set as I think it would probably be easier to control You can now see a flashing green signal just here and this is the signal that's going to have the 40 kilometer warning so there was a number four on there i held down the page down key just before we got to the signal just to ensure that i didn't miss the pzb alarm and i do now have the brakes on for the upcoming 40 kilometer per hour speed limit just going to apply the brakes a bit harder we were in notch seven braking i believe we're now in notch eight braking which is bringing our speed down quite nicely and you can see the next signal just coming up i'm hoping that i've slowed down quick enough not to trigger any pzb penalty brake applications and it looks like i have done thankfully and you can now see the signal just coming up here with the 40 kilometer per hour speed limit which will be coming into force as we pass the signal so I'm now reducing the braking. Reapplying it slightly as we are going downhill at this point. I just want to ensure that we don't end up braking the speed limit because I do know the PZB system can be quite sensitive and quite prone to giving you emergency brake applications. I have now released the brakes at this point as I just felt we were losing a little bit too much speed there. I believe we've got a 40 km per hour speed limit because we've got to cross some points just here and once we have crossed them the speed limit will then be increasing once again. So we are now crossing the points and you can see the platform just ahead and this is Gauting station and once again I do need to stop at the end of the platform. We are just going to lose a little bit of speed here as the gradient has now changed and it has in fact leveled out so I've just given us a little bit of power to try and ensure we don't lose too much speed. As we're doing 40 kilometers per hour we're only doing 25 miles per hour anyway. Now I'm just going to gradually start applying the brakes as we come into the platform to try and bring us to a smooth stop at the end.
Departing Gauting, the starting speed limit is up to 120 kilometers per hour. And at this point, we've got around 3.2 kilometers to go to the next stop, which is Stockdorf. And 3.2 kilometers is around two miles. It's around 1.6 kilometer to a mile. For those of you watching who maybe aren't quite so familiar with the use of kilometers. Something else I think I forgot to mention earlier is that this scenario is one that I downloaded myself from Steam Workshop and it is the 0744S6 Tutzing to Ostbahnhof scenario. Now that we're reaching 120 km per hour I'm just cutting back the power to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. What I'm looking out for now is the rear of some signals that we're going to pass under. As we pass under them, we've then got around 1.3 kilometers to go to our stop. We're now passing the rear of the signals that I mentioned a moment ago. So at this point, we've got 1.3 kilometers to go. I'm going to continue to move for now. And as we reach the signals on the tracks to the right that you can see just coming up, at that point, I'm then going to start applying the brakes for our stop. So I'm now making a brake application. I believe we're on notch seven or eight brakes at this point. It is difficult to tell as I can't actually see what position the power handle is in. It's just a bit of a guess, but I think we are in roughly the right place for slowing us down. And you can see the platform at Stockdorf coming up just now. We're going to be entering the platform possibly slightly on the quick side looking at it. Actually 60 kilometers per hour isn't too bad. I think that we should be able to bring our speed down quite nicely here. In time for the end of the platform which is the position at which we need to stop. In fact I'm just going to reduce the braking slightly now as I think we may be stopping slightly too early. And we should now be stopped in about the right place. Departing Stockdorf, the starting speed limit is 120 kilometers per hour, and we've got around 1.6 kilometers or one mile to go to the next stop, which is Planig. As we get close to 100 kilometers per hour, at that point I'm then going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. There is no point in going up to 120 kilometers per hour because we will be having to brake very quickly for the next stop. And so I'm now shutting off the power and pulling it back to idle. And as you can see, we're passing a signal here. And then just after that, you're going to see the rear of some signals. And at this point, I'm now applying the brakes for our stop at Planig. Coming in slightly slower than at the previous stop, so in fact I'm going to cut back the braking slightly just to ensure that we don't stop too early. You can see the end of the platform just coming up now, which is roughly where we need to stop.
Departing Planig, the starting speed limit is 120 kilometers per hour, and we've got 1.8 kilometers to go to the next stop, which is Grefelfing. As we now reach 120 kilometers per hour, I'm pulling the power back to idle just to allow the train to coast. And in a moment, I will be applying the brakes just as we enter this left-hand curve just here, ready for our stop. Now that we're entering the left-hand curve, I'm applying the brakes. coming a little quicker than uh, usual or that I planned and so we enter the platform at 65 kilometers per hour which is around 40 miles per hour seeing as this train has very good brakes we should be able to stop in time but I do generally think it's bad practice to come into a platform that quick Departing Grefelfing, the starting speed limit is 120 kilometers per hour, and we have just over one kilometer to go to the next stop, which is Lockham. Now, Lockham is one of the places I couldn't find a pronunciation for online. So if you've got any correction on my pronunciation of that, or in fact, any of the other places, please do let me know in the comments. I'm always open to correction on my pronunciations. Now, as we reach 80 kilometers per hour at this point, I'm then going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. As you can see the next station coming up already, and in a moment I will be braking to enter the platform at between 50 and 55 kilometers per hour. So I'm applying the brakes now to bring our speed down nicely. I'm just reducing the braking momentarily or else we are going to stop too early. As at every other station, we do need to stop here at the end of the platform. Departing Lockham, the starting speed limit is 120 kilometers per hour, and we have around two and a half kilometers to go to the next stop, which is Westkreuz. As you may have noticed, the signal departing Lockham just there had a 100 kilometer warning on it, warning, of us, warning us of an upcoming 100 kilometer per hour speed limit at the next signal, which is 1.3 kilometers away. So I'm going to go just a little bit over 100, but not by much, as I will need to be braking by the time you reach that signal. And indeed, now that we're just over 100 kilometers per hour, I'm now cutting back the power to idle. And I will brake if necessary in a moment. I'm not sure if this is our signal or not. In fact, no, it's not. It's for the opposite direction. I was braking there just in case. So I'm just going to allow us to cruise along at 100 kilometers per hour along here, just to ensure that we don't end up braking any speed limits.
This signal just here does also have a 60 km per hour PZB warning, which I've just acknowledged. And I'm now going to immediately start braking for an upcoming 60 km per hour speed restriction. I believe it actually might be after the next stop, which is just coming up. But I just want to slow down just in case beforehand, as I can't remember 100% whether the signal is before or after our stop. Our stop is coming up in a moment just around this right hand curve here. I have now slowed to 60 km per hour. I'm just going to allow the train to cruise at that. In fact, I'll break just as we're entering the platform and you can see the platform at Vestkreutz just coming up now. So I'm now going to apply the brakes and as always stop at the end of the platform. Departing from Westkreuz, the starting speed limit is 60 km per hour at this signal just here. And we've got around 1.5 km to go to the next stop, which is Munich Pacing. As we get up to 60 km per hour, I'm then going to cut back on the power, and we should just need to go between idle and notch 1 to roughly maintain our speed. Shortly after this overbridge that we're about to pass under, I can then accelerate as the speed limit is going up to 100 km per hour. However, I won't be able to get to that before braking for Munich Pacing Station. And so I am now accelerating up to 75 km per hour. In fact, I've gone up to 80 there and now I'm just shutting off the power at this point. And in a moment I will be braking for our stop. I'm just reducing the braking momentarily as we were about to stop just slightly too early. And we're now stopped in about the right place. Departing from Munich Pacing, the starting speed limit is 100 km per hour and we have around 3.3 km to go at this point to Lyme. This is another station which I couldn't find the pronunciation for online, so I'm very open to correction on this. I would like to apologise for some of the lag which I've experienced on this journey. Um, I know that as we get closer to Munich we may experience a bit more lag. I did in fact have to clone this scenario and delete some of the static consists in the yard here, um, the yards here should I say, at Munich just because it was affecting the frame rate quite badly. And now that we're at 100 km per hour I'm going to go between idle and notch one which should hopefully roughly maintain us at this speed.
I have just added a second notch of power as I felt we were losing just a little bit too much speed and I'm now reducing the power once again. In a moment we're about to start going uphill on a gradient of 1 in 125 at which point I will just add just a little bit of power here. At the next signal that we pass just here we've got 1.3 kilometres to go to our stop at Lyme. gradient here has now leveled out before in a moment going downhill again at one in 125 so I'm just about to idle the power and as we enter this next left hand curve just coming up at that point I will then apply the brakes for our next stop so we're now entering the left hand curve and I'm now making a brake application Again, coming into the platform slightly quicker than I would perhaps like, just over 60 kilometers per hour, but we should be able to stop in time. Departing from Lyme, the starting speed limit is 100 kilometers per hour, and we have 1.1 kilometers to go to the next stop, which is Hirschgarten. As soon as we get to 80 kilometers per hour, I'm then going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. We will be going downhill into the next station which will affect our ability to brake and so I find it's quite an easy station to overshoot and I want to prevent that on this journey today. So just before we finish turning this left hand curve here I am now applying the brakes for our stop at Hirschgarten. I want to make sure that we didn't enter the platform any faster than 60 kilometers per hour. As you can see, we are going to be entering at 55, which should be all right. And I'm just applying a bit more braking now to ensure that we are slowing down in time. Once again, I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform. Departing Hirschgarten, the starting speed limit is 100 km per hour, although it is immediately going down to 90 km per hour just here, and we have 1.3 km to go to the next stop, which is probably the longest place name on the entire journey, which is Donnersberger Brücke. As we get towards 90 kilometers per hour, I'm then going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop just as we enter this left hand curve here. So 
So we are now braking nicely for our stop and we are just about to enter the platform. You should be able to see it just on the right hand side now. I have just reduced the braking slightly as I feel that we're slowing down just a bit too quick for the length of the platform. I'm just releasing the brakes a bit more. I did apply them a bit harder just there to try and bring our speed down, but I think I just applied them slightly too much. And so we should now be stopping in about the right place. Departing Donners Burger Brucke, the starting speed limit is 80 km per hour and we have 0.8 km to go to the next stop, which is Hackerbrucke. Just coming up now we have a short but steep downhill gradient and then immediately afterwards a short but steep uphill gradient. So just as we get towards the level here, I'm now idling the power to allow the train to coast. And I'm just going to apply the brakes in a moment just as we get to the top of this hill here. So I've now made a notch 8 brake application just to bring our speed down. I'm now reducing that as we get closer to the platform to ensure that we don't stop too quickly. Just to our right you can see the main Munich Hauptbahnhof station. We were slowing down just slightly too quick there, so I had to release the brakes slightly. And we're now stopping in about the right place. Departing Hackerbrucke, the starting speed limit is 60 km per hour and we have 0.8 km to go to the final stop, which is Munich Hauptbahnhof. I know at the start of this uh, video I said Munich Ostbahnhof and indeed that is where this train is destined, but I thought that this was Munich Ostbahnhof station that we're coming into here, where it is, whereas it isn't. And so I'd just like to issue that correction now, though I have put a correction there in the captions of this video. I've just allowed our speed to get slightly too fast there, so I've had to apply the brakes and we are now coming into our final stop. We did just slip up to around 64 to 65 kilometers per hour, which uh, was a complete accident on the downhill section. I should have applied more brake than I did. But we all make mistakes occasionally. And so I'm aiming to stop here again at the end of the platform, just before the signal on the right hand side. I won't be able to go out and give a, an external cutaway shot at this station due to it being underground. As a result, this, the final shot that I'll be able to show will be from within the cab of this train. So here we are, arrival at Munich Hauptbahnhof. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, please don't forget you can find me on Facebook, the link of which is in the description of this video. And I've also put the German signaling guide link in the description of this video. And lastly, if you do value the work that I do and would like to support me financially towards the cost of new DLC or equipment, then please visit my Patreon page for further information. In addition to that, though, if you wouldn't like to commit anything monthly uh, like you do with Patreon, then you're more than welcome to just check out my Steam wishlist and see if there's any DLC that you would like to donate to me. I've put the link for that now on the main Patreon page in my description on there. Again, thank you very much for watching.